the Foo Fighters. You have now inducted, congr congratulations. And just so you know, and, and this is very important, the Edge Rock of Fame, the architect was the same man who made the Hotel California in Margaritaville. So you're in good yeah. company. Yeah. So <laughs> congratulations. Wonderful. Uh, before we move on, I got to just, on behalf of everybody, you guys basically saved rock and roll Sunday night at Lollapalooza. That Thank you. It was, you know, honestly, it was a good day. I, I woke up that morning, and I knew we were playing with the Arctic Monkeys. Monkeys are great. The Cars were playing that day. The Cars played. And so I woke up that morning, and I opened up my curtains, and I saw that it was raining. I was so bummed, because I, personally, I don't mind playing in the rain, but I always feel bad for the audience, you know? They're like standing around all day waiting, and then all of a sudden, like, it just starts pissing down rain. So, it, honestly... So then I looked at weather.com and it said that it was going to rain from like 5.30 to 6.30. And I thought, oh, good. It's not going to hit us. It's going to hit the monkeys. You know? <laughs> so, and then right before we went on, I was walking up stage with my guitar and our production manager, BB, said, okay, dude, look, it's going to storm really hard in about half an hour, but only for about 20 minutes. So just be careful. And when that rain started coming down, it was right when we started, I think, My Hero. That was right. And honestly, it became it, one of the greatest moments of my entire life. It was so cool. Probably, and probably the most memorable live experience uh, ever. Absolutely. It was insane. I, mine too. And, and it, was it, was so just an it was just an example of trying to thoughts of today of why we, this was so important for us and what the last you know, generation has equaled. It's called something like substance over glamour. And that's what that night was. That night was about substance. That's what the last 15, 16 years have been about. It's been about substance over glamour. Definitely over glamour. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of glamour too. Don't yeah, no glamour here. <laughs> well, but, you know, I mean, it's and like a night like tonight we're playing with effed up yeah. and the doughboys, you know? Yeah. So, like, to me, th that rock and roll never really went away, you know? Like, it's always, there's always been good bands. Newer bands like effed up or old bands like the doughboys and the, we're still around and, and it's, you know, I think that there's sometimes where it kind of gets a little cloudy and popular music gets a little weird and, and maybe the glamour does sort of over, get is more than the substance, but you know, to me, rock and roll is not going anywhere. So and, and that's, yeah. And, and another thing, I, I was thinking about uh, your relationship with the station here, and that's what this is all about. Our Rock of Fame is, is, is acknowledging the bands that we've grown up with the last year. And our relationship started, and it, we did that show at the Horseshoe when Nothing Left to Lose came out. And I remember sitting in the back, you know, when we were talking, and then you guys went out and played, and, and, and a thought that watching you guys that night was, if you guys can roll into a club and just play like that, then there's no excuses for anybody else. And it's that, it's that thing that's kept it really real for a lot of bands. And I know, Taylor, you said some amazing things about Perry Farrell and, and uh, his affection, your affection you had for him the other night. And that's just kind of summed up the whole generation. Yeah, I mean, I, I said it the other night, but I mean, in 1987 or 88, whenever Jane's Addiction came out, I mean, I was just listening to old music because music wasn't really... In my, in my sphere, my world of friends, I didn't... You know, I was just listening to old 80s music because it was all not really good as far as hard rock. And then Jane's Addiction came out and totally saved rock and roll for me. I mean, it re they really did. So Perry's, obviously, that band and Perry are so important to... I mean, there wouldn't be an, you know alternative rock, whatever that means, radio stations. It wouldn't, it wouldn't be here yet. And there, and there might not be what, what, again, I can think back to another time when you guys came and did that free show at Lee's Palace. You guys remember that one? You did that free show at Lee's I think, um, Monsieur, you did some dancing on a bar that night with a guitar. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> but I think some whatever walls were busted down 15, 20 years ago that bands could come into... There's, there's, there's edges all over, all over the world. And I know that you, know, you make the same effort everywhere you go. And that part has built that connection between the audience and the bands. That's something when we were growing up, we never thought we'd be this close to the artists. That we no, well, that's kind of the exciting thing about now, I think, is that you know, when Jane's Addiction first started getting popular... Doors were opening. Lots of bands were opening doors for other bands. Like, you know, Husker Du started getting kind of popular. And then, like, the replacements were getting popular. And yeah. co college radio started becoming more popular. And all of those doors were, were opening up for bands to come. And, but then all of a sudden, like, the underground blew up. 
And the underground was a nice place because nobody really had career aspiration. People just were making music because they wanted to start a band with their friends and get free beer or whatever it was, you know. And so it was that independence that was awesome. And now, now that you know the the music industry is it's in the people's hands now. So it's back to that place where you can do your own thing and be really independent and do it for the right reasons. You don't need all you need is is a computer and you can let the entire world hear your song. And I think it's really exciting because anyone here can start a band and anyone in the world can hear your band. So it's kind of even better than it used to be. You know what I mean? I think it's exciting. Another great moment, uh, we all remember Edgefest 98, because it was, it was a highlight. The Edgefest went across the country. And I just want, I remember this, and you guys just tell the story. Green Day wasn't being very nice to the bands that were playing after them, if you remember, with the drums. With the drums. Okay. And then the last show of the tour, you guys get, decided to little avenge on Green Day. You remember that one? Yeah. Dude, yeah. We, we well, kind of stole their gag, didn't well, we? I mean, the... The, at the the last diplomatic the last show of a tour, all of the bands usually play gags on one another, right? And so, and we'd been hanging out with them the whole tour, and it'd been great, it'd been really fun. They're really fun to hang out with. And so, the last night, the last night of the tour, um, every night that they would play, they would set their drum set on fire. And so, we were trying to think like, um, and they, we went on right before them every night. And so, we thought, okay, well. What if we burn our drum set first? <laughs> Just to see, like, if they would still burn their drum set. And uh, <laughs> we burned the drum set, and the crowd just went bananas. Because if you burn anything on stage, people <laughs> freak out. And so, well, we'll see what happens. And so, <clears throat> so we burned the drum set. And I remember as we were walking off stage, one of the road crew looked at us and went, That's not cool, man. <laughs> And, and, there's, and you know what? They still burn their drum set. <laughs> and there's and people all over the world it. that give you a check mark because Trey Cool's <laughs> been like doing that to everybody. Yeah. Uh, we are here. It is the inaugural Edge Rock of Fame induction ceremony. Your initial inductees, the Foo Fighters. 